so in the last class uh, till the last class what we have discussed is what are the different steps that uh, we take to create a lexical analyzer or scanner. The first step was uh, the creation of regular expression for valid tokens of a language. Then what we did is we converted a regular expression to the corresponding NFA or NDFA. Now from NDFA what we did is we converted it into the equivalent deterministic finite automata or DFA. Okay. <coughs> so uh, after that we can also in, uh, include some minimization DFA minimization techniques to reduce the number of states because the states uh, the DFA we get from a NDFA may not be optimized one so we can go for an, an optimized version of DFA by doing state minimization that I am not covering here uh, we can uh, discuss if uh, required okay and uh, today what I will discuss is how to create a program create a program for a given DFA So what is a DFA basically? DFA basically is a machine that finds out a given particular string that accepts a particular input string. Okay. So I can always create a C or C++ program which, which will take an argument which will take an input string as an argument and will return true or false based on whether it accepts that input string or not okay okay so let us now try to find out let us now try to create a small dfa and try to write a program for that so suppose this is my start state okay this is my s0 this is my S1 and this is my final state SF. Let me complete that. Uh, so in start state if I get an input symbol B suppose my alphabet set is alphabet set is A and B only so if I get an input symbol B I remain in start state if I get A I move to S0 from S0 if I get again a B then I come back and if uh, I go to S1 if I get another A in S1 if I, I remain in S1 for any occurrences of A and uh, if I found a B I go to SF now in SF A or B I remain in SF okay so first uh, tell me what this DFA accepts what pattern this DFA recognize so you can see here if I get a first day I go to S0 then for the next day I go to S1 okay for any occurrence of a i remain in s1 and i hit the first b i go to sf final set that means this dfa is recognizing the substring this dfa recognizes whether a given string has a A B as a substring. Understood? So this DFA is uh, uh, recognizes whether uh, a given input string has A A B as a substring or not. Okay. 
Now let us try to write a program to implement this DFA. Okay. So what I have done is I have created a small program. Okay, C++ program. Now you can see here how I have started. I have enumerated, I have created an enum type which takes care of all possible states. Okay, so currently I have uh, state uh, starting state, state 0, state 1 and the final state for the given problem. And I have represent uh, and I have uh, made it as a type def as a DFS state t. Okay. Now this function will recognize std string input string. Okay. So this function will return me true if the given input string has a a b as a uh, substring or otherwise it will return false. So I initialized my current state variable to the start state and I iterate over every character of the input string. Okay. Now for every character I have to decide what is my current state okay, and what is my current character and on the basis of that I have to move the current state to the next state. For example, suppose I am in starting state and my current character is A, I am processing the input symbol A, then the current state will be S0 uh, state 0 okay, and if I am in B then current state will remain in start state. Okay. So in this way we create a, uh, we complete all the possible scenarios for a given state and a given character. Understand? Now there is another way of doing this also that is called as table driven method of writing a DFA program. Okay. Now what does this table driven method, uh, just a second, let me. So, so this is a table driven method. Okay. So what we do here is we create what we call as a transition table. For example, here I have total number of states as 4 and the total number of valid input characters is 2. So total number of input characters in the alphabet set is 2, you will say. And hence the transition table is a two dimensional matrix where the rows represent the state and the columns represent the characters I am processing. So for example, this is my uh, row 0 corresponds to start state and the first column corresponds to the input symbol A. So when I am in start state and I get an input symbol A, then I should go to state 0. Okay. So this way we represent a transition table in a, in a program. Now after we create this transition table from a given DFA, the job is pretty simple. Uh, we just have to write a small function that will iterate over every character and based on the uh, based on character I will just uh, write state is equal to I will get the value from the transition table. So transition table state 0 corresponds to the current state and the input character A. Transition table state 1 corresponds to the current state and input character B. Okay. Now after processing all the input strings, if my current state is not the final state, then I should return false. Okay. So this way, so the transition table generally the scanner generators like flex or lex use this kind of mechanism to convert all such DFAs of a given language into what we call as this transition table. Okay, thanks.